We're going to go ahead and call to order the June 10th Planning Commission meeting. And we have currently four commissioners, and I believe we have another one on the way, Ms. Kunda. So we do have a quorum. Review of minutes, Mr. Simileski. I move that they be approved as uh, submitted. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the like sign. The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. First order of item of business is rezoning request number 832. Property owner Marcy and Marcel Toulouse. And we're looking at 139 Cinnamon Road zoning change from R1M to R2. Mr. Davis. Yeah, if you look on your screen, you'll see the parcel in red. So that's the parcel we'll be discussing as, um, as a part of this request. Now I'm going to switch over the map. So on that now, it's this parcel here that we're discussing. So the applicants requested to rezone it from R1M to R2, and the main driving force of this is re regarding lot width requirements. So a lot width requirement on R1M would be 80 feet, and R2 would be 50 feet. So if you look along the frontage of this road here, that there is 150 feet. So they're 10 feet shy from meeting a two lot subdivision to create two lots. So what we've, that, well, that's what we've been told is pretty much the, the reasoning behind the request is simply to get the lot width requirement that would be associated to R2. It's not so much the lot size. They would still be able to meet the 14.5. It would just be more the lot width. So if you look at Cinnamon Road, this is the road here, and this is essentially the lot with an old mobile home. I believe that's been removed. If you look on the latest aerials, it's no longer there. So the road itself is kind of an older state road done with a ditch section. And these are more common with larger lot, wider lot type standard developments. They're not typical for smaller, more narrow lot type styles. If somebody was to develop under an R2 today, this would be a curb and gutter with sidewalk type section. So that's obviously a concern to staff. We've talked about that several times regarding the infrastructure and the roads that serve zoning and the type of uh, lots that can be established within zoning. Um, and something in this one too as well is if you look to the left of this one, there's a strip right here at about 50 feet wide that goes to the back. This used to be a part of the lot. So this was pulled out and given access to this property in the rear that essentially at that time created the 150 foot lot width. The character of this neighborhood and along this road typically has wider lot widths. <clears throat> if we were to start going and creating R2 zoning, it would change the character of the lot width requirements along that type of road. In addition to this, the county is currently going through a study. If you look behind the lot, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. There is a creek back here that is currently being studied and the area in general has been known to have some flooding issues. And in the report, it kind of detailed that. We kind of provided a little uh, quote from the public works department. So when we know we have um, infrastructure and roads that don't really serve particular zoning and we know we have flooding issues historically with a flood, way, uh, flood study and everything, it concerns us to increase or take zoning and add a new zoning that simply adds density to an area. So from looking at these kind of two things and trying to maintain the existing character of the neighborhood, staff recommends denial. Okay. Let the record reflect that Ms. Kunda is here. 
We now have five commissioners. Uh, is there anyone here representing this rezoning request? Yes, ma'am, if you come forward, give us your name and address, please. Commissioner's questions for the applicant? Uh, yeah, I'd like to know, um, Ms. James, you, there's an old mobile home there. Do you plan on removing that old mobile home? Um, so it's actually been removed already. It's already been removed, okay. So um, you'd be building some units on here or? Okay, two homes on one lot, one home on each lot. Then. Yes, sir. On each side. Okay, so these two right kind of draw on this. Yes, sir. Okay, so these two right here. So it'd be one home and one home. Yes, sir. Okay. The easement that uh, accesses the back property is that deeded and fee simple, or is that strictly an easement? That, that is a, that, that piece of property that was pulled out was subdivided out and added to the other parcel. So it's its own 50 foot strip serving the back. It's not an encumbrance on the lot. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, is there anybody here who would like to speak for or against this rezoning request? I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure I, this, you know, I don't want to take anything away from the neighborhood, but I think the removal of that old mobile home was a good thing. And half of 69 hundredths is 34 hundredths. That's a third of an acre. Seems to me that's not a bad size for a lot. You know, if you've got water and sewer and that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm not, a, I'm gonna say, I'll give it a motion to approve uh, notwithstanding what staff has said, I think they did their job. I understand that, but um, with the housing situation we've got, people need places to live, and that might be two reasonable homes someone could build. So I'll motion to approve. Okay, we do have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. Se I'll, you going to second? Okay, Mr. Judy, second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? I'd just like to say that I support Mr. Pratt and his analysis of it, and I don't see any reason why it should not be rezoned into two lots. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Mr. Davis, on rezoning request 834, we've, we're talking about four different pieces of property. Are we going to deal with those individually or in total? In total. Thank you. Okay. Rezoning request number 834, property owner Iron, Iron Horse, DV Timber, AGG, and Anna Sego. And four different properties being aggregated, I guess, eventually is the plan. And it's a rezoning request today from MUC to R2. Mr. Davis. Yeah, so if you look on your screens, you'll see those four properties. Um, there, it, as you see, they're kind of there, but the only one I wanna point out here is this portion of right here. So this line here was added in based off an exhibit provided us for, as a part of the application because this piece here is a larger piece of this piece right here that kind of wraps down So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that that piece, all of the other are the pieces, but that one there is a portion of. So the location of these, as you can see, here's Orangeburg Road, here's the intersection with Mallard. We've had a lot of development activity in this general region over the, some of the years. Everybody's very familiar with this intersection. These pieces here are these pieces right in here. There's Yerby Road right there. So the history of this one is 
a couple years ago, we were approached to look at these parcels here, which at that time also included some of these parcels right here, to look to develop these knowing the water and sewer issues are in the area as well as a lack of road and infrastructure, including that one um, intersection right here. Since that time, staff and the applicant and the applicant's um, representatives uh, have had several meetings regarding the development of these parcels. They've provided some information. A lot of the infrastructure needs have been identified um, and everybody is in agreement that it will require significant infrastructure upgrades to support the type of development that's been discussed that could be supported in an R2 style uh, zoning. So through that time, there have been some back and forths in a few meetings and, it, and it's, it, it's been a little bit and some progress has been made. However, at this point, when staff received the application, staff felt that the amount of information that we had received to date to properly continue the discussions simply were not provided at that time. So there's, we, we still believe there's an opportunity here of these parcels since they're so large considering the proximity here. I mean, that's a pretty rare thing to have parcels of this size and this area of the county to develop a, a master plan community that can be very cohesive and can provide some of the items that you said about some housing in the area as we know we're growing. We're just concerned at this time, we think it's premature based off of the previous discussion and the information we've provided to date. So for those reasons, at this time, staff cannot support the request. Okay. Do we have someone here representing the applicant or the applicant? Please come forward. Give us your names and addresses, please. Commissioners, questions? Um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> thank you all for coming forward. It looks like <clears throat> you're putting together a large development. And um, so that this would probably be a planned development, is that correct? That is correct. Mark, if you could share the site plan that we submitted. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Mark talk here in a second, but I wanted to say that, um, so we understand that this is
make sure that in the school situation we address at least as far as providing land for that opportunity as well as some parking spaces. And that's right. And that, and that location was chosen in conjunction with discussions with the school district uh, who would be interested in seeing a school on site here at this location. So in some, uh, you know, we understand there's a lot of work to be done. This is simply a first step. Uh, we recognize that the, the complete the rezoning is a several month effort that we use today Our, uh, our intention is to use that time during the pendency of that period to uh, pursue the development agreement with, uh, with the county, the county staff uh, and council. So with that, uh, we ask uh, for the commission's support um, and we will take that as a positive sign and make further investments to pursue the development. What's the number of houses uh, or lots? Proposed uh, 1,300. <laughs> Okay. Over, you know, as demand sure. Comes, but the total correct would be there. Is what we're going to have for approval in the, in the plan development. Well, the obvious thing is that I, I just want to, yeah, I just want to clarify that the term master planning is different than a plan development. Correct. Exactly. It, it, it would still be under straight zone. Right. Okay. Because obviously, the one thing that comes to mind is the T word traffic with that number of houses in an area that's already under great pressure right now around Mallard Road and Old Orangeburg Road. I mean, it's a nightmare morning and afternoon, and we're going to dump all those other traffic on there. So did the traffic analysis, did it stand alone based on this development, or was it done in looking at total impact on Old Orangeburg Road? What were those recommendations? Well, yeah, so, so, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't do the study. I've read it. Um, our office did do the report. Um, there were, uh, of course, widening uh, and improving Yerby. Um, I think uh, there were three phases. Um, Yerby, oh, thank you, Mark, that helps. Uh, Yerby and Orangeburg, uh, making sure I think there was going to be a turn lane there. Yerby being widened and improved. Um, Orangeburg and Mallard intersection, and then down at Sinclair, there was going to be some improvements on Sinclair as well, is my recollection. That's right. Just uh, some a widening of some, some uh, I'm sorry, not a widening of Sinclair, but a realignment. There's a, a strange three way intersection. So yeah. It's problematic for us. Yeah. So we were talking about either, again, the, the design would be this up in the air, but it could be a realignment. And that would be refined through the process, I'm yes. sure. Because wouldn't we select now the firm to do the traffic study? Yeah, we, we pick it, right? Yeah, I mean, the process, I get when this, when, probably when that. this started, I don't know if that was in place. So, um, to answer your question, yeah. it, we, were, we were one of the first projects to come through, and so it was decided because we'd already done so much work that we would also do we were, we're also one of the firm on the selection. Liz, okay. And just for clarification, all we're talking about today is a zoning change. Correct. We're not talking about a plan, development, or anything. We're talking strictly a zoning change. That's correct. Because for me, it's kind of a chicken and an egg thing, which comes first. You know, and to me, the zoning obviously should come before the development agreement. Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, what's the projected timeline on the water and sewer improvements? Well, it depends. Yeah, and so we, we kind of looked at how many homes we can start without any improvements, and there are only what we have, 40, 40. So you could do 40 homes with no sewer or water improvements, is what we are at, where we're at. So we <coughs> We don't want to hit the brakes, so all that would be going on simultaneously while we're designing the first 
But you'd have to have the capacity to accommodate the new units. So that's what I'm saying. The 40 you could do, the rest, we would have to be, all the upgrades would have to be done before any more than the 40 could come online. So you couldn't do 1,300 homes, you could only do 40. Okay. Or until all the improvements. Was that the second unit that was actually the first basic one? Any other questions from the commissioners? Um, Mr. Chair, I, I just have a question for staff mostly. Um, I mean, I understand, and from my standpoint, I think you said this was just a little early, maybe. I think that's what I'm hearing. I just want to make sure that's kind of how you're looking at it, like is you need more information or uh, based on the zoning recommendation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a combination of that, but just how all the meetings started and, and how this all kind of got to where we are today and how everything was and what was promised um, that we just thought it was a little premature. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have a wetlands letter from the Corps of Engineers? Yes, sir. You've got you've got a, what a five year letter. Hmm. Well, we we applied for a wetlands letter on, on all the parcels. Um, I, I think that out of the four parcels, I think we've got three three, three yeah. sectional letters. They're all they're all dated within the last year, so it'd be good for another four years. Um, and I think the fifth out of four is still pending. That's correct. Any other questions or comments? One of my issues is the amount we require up front these days for a development. You know, it's getting to the point where if we keep loading more and more on the front end of the thing, you're not going to be able to afford a development. And so I think, you know, zoning, rezoning has to come first. You know, that's the chicken and egg thing. I think you get the rezoning done, then you got all the time in the world to deal with the development and the plan. But we can't move forward without a zoning change the way I see it. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Okay, do we have anybody? Thank you all very much. Do we have anybody you'd like to speak for or against this rezoning request? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward and name an address if you would, please.
So to help, we, because these properties had access to here, we had to post the road here and here and here because it abuts those roads. So that's what she's referring to as she saw signs. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. And for the record, we have your letter. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And at a staff level, I'd also like to add that through the developments of guess these types of things, I can promise you staff would be fighting for significant buffers against those adjacent neighborhoods. Thought I have to be. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, sir. <coughs> Can't see you behind the podium there. Excuse me? I couldn't see you behind the podium there when you were Husband of mine, same address. Well, I, I just say this, I like to say to our elected officials, it's time to stop this overdevelopment. We live in a rural community. Big money comes in, buys it up, and destroys our way of life. It's time to stop it. Now, they don't live there. I don't think any of y'all live anywhere near here. It's time we stop ruining our lives. Thank you. Anybody else? Martin Battle. I live at 222 Marion Road, which is what this property butts up to. Um, and my interest is how close is this going to come to my property? What kind of buffer zone are we talking about? Well, I would say that. On behalf. I think you know, it's so preliminary at this point. Uh, we have uh, done a good amount of formal engineering. Uh, I think there's a lot, a lot of work to be done. You know, Mr. Davis is on record saying that he's quite for larger buffer. I think at least he, he can get. Um, it just, you know, can you just put some pipes in back up again, Mark? Thank you. Again, this site plan is very conceptual in nature, but it does show a buffer. Not able to stack houses that close to that many houses per acre on there. Y'all should be limited to how many houses y'all can put per acre. Um, and so there's not going to be any access from Barron Road through the subdivision. Not, not under the current plan. Okay. Um, or in the dead end of Sage Way. So the only access from our side is Sinclair. So y'all have Sinclair and then Yerby. That's right. A lot of this is preliminary and not spelled out just yet. Right now, all we're looking at is a zoning change. Now, next thing you know, we're going to have a road of access right there on Barron Road at my driveway, and I'll have to deal with everybody up right at the side of my property. Well, the person you're going to need to deal with is planning right there that they're going to protect your property. 
and ensure the buffers and everything are as they should be I, for the I, development. I'm against the rezoning. Um, I, I, I think we need to definitely back off of this for a while until uh, not the wide lane roads. We need four lane roads. We need to have some four lane roads out there to, to start moving this traffic along before you start filling a subdivision like this here out there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to kind of jump in on that, and I can obviously respect, obviously you all know I'm one of the first people fighting for existing people here that live in the county, but the current, it already has current zoning. Yep. It's zoned MUC, and one thing that I think that's very important is, believe it or not, going to R2 is a down zoning. So MUC allows for a lot more intensive uses than R2 does, so part of why staff has been able to support this is knowing the level of intensity and the types of development that can occur within the MUC zoning district. And we believed going to R2 was a step to actually make it less intense. Yep. So I think that's very important for the commission as well as the uh, members of the audience to know. Anybody else want to speak to this rezoning request? <laughs> Let me ask you after the meeting to get with Mr. Davis and y'all discuss that, please. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do have one more question, Mr. Chair. In the comprehensive plan, this property in this area, how is it, um, is this for residential development? Correct. So it's set up for residential development. Yeah, this area here would fall into like that kind of residential development in this nature, not quite you know, medium to high density, more of this, you know, three units to the acre type thing. Whereas the MUC, you could do townhomes in there over five units to the acre. R2 would not allow for townhomes or apartments. And I think that's important. It's important, thank you. Any other questions, comments, discussion? I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that you, that we give it approval, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I like the fact that they're putting a school out there, or supposedly putting a school out there. Um, this property, whether it's is this year or next year or next year, this property, because of the comprehensive plan and the MUC zoning, will become housing once the infrastructure allows it to, which the county controls that. That's Dorchester County Council controls that infrastructure, the, the roads and what they will require this developer to do. So our zoning is basically down zoning it from more units to less units. So I think we accomplished something there. Um, so I would make the motion to approve that this zoning, of course, even if we approve it, it goes to county council, county council can can turn it down. It's really up to county council. All we do is recommend. So I would say I'll give it a motion to approve it. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, my point on it is similar to yours, Mr. Pratt, but uh, I look at it as strictly a zoning change to R2 is all we're discussing today. All the, all the planning, everything else, traffic, all that will be done downstream. And the R2 has actually been a more restrictive zoning than MUC. I support the zoning change. So we have a motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, subdivision applications and requests. Final plats, the ponds phase seven, Mr. Davis. So here we have a final plat for ponds phase seven. If you look on your screen, it's a pretty big phase. Um, it's kind of on the back side of ponds. I'm gonna pull off the plat here in a second and show you the location within the ponds itself. So if you're coming into the entry of the ponds here, you basically have this section, you can kind of see it now on these 2021 aerials cut out here. This is where they're coming in and requesting final plat approvals back in here. Um, you know, the, it, 
obviously this is the final plat. We've gone through this. Uh, the final plat substantially conforms to the approved preliminary plan. Uh, staff recommends conditional approval uh, with those conditions being uh, minor outstanding comments from the assessor's office and the water and sewer department. Okay. Questions? I'd entertain a motion. Move to approve. We have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And repeat your motion, it is to approve. Uh, conditionally approve to uh, essentially take care of minor outstanding plat comments. Okay, plat comments, that's all. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, the ayes have it. No street name requests today, no old business. New business, Swan Drive River Access, Mr. Davis. Yeah, so our Parks and Recreation Director is here to kind of give you a uh, more in-depth presentation. But if you recall, what we have and we bring this forward to you is, uh, we did it with Ashley River Park, is that anytime we use some of the public funds from the uh, referendum to build parks, we have to show that it's compatible with the comprehensive plan. So in your staff report, we kind of gave a general idea of kind of explaining what that is and where it comes from. So what we have today for you is a uh, presentation from the director to kind of explain a little bit about the park and um, why this site has been chosen and what the goals of the park are to achieve. Okay. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, uh, this is the Swan Drive River Access Site just downstream from Highway 17A, Slans Bridge, where it crosses the Ashley River. Um, the intent in building an access at this point is uh, to further the Ashley River Blue Trail, which was an effort that was started in 2015 or 2016 to provide continuous uh, river access points along the stretch of the Ashley River from really this point all the way down to Charleston Harbor. Um, as you know, we opened the Bridgman River access, I believe in late 2018. Um, that's seen tremendous success. That, that parking lot will be completely packed on the weekends. This site is about five miles upriver, and it really represents about the uppermost stretch of the Ashley River where you have a nice channel and the river is navigable for canoes and kayaks. Um, in, plan, in, in our design with our master plan, which uh, has been approved by county council already, um, we took a few things into consideration. We knew that we needed enough spaces, parking spaces, so that it would not spill out into the till on the Ashley neighborhood. So we've got uh, over 20 parking spaces there including some spaces for vans or trucks that may be pulling trailers loaded with kayaks. Those are shown up near the top there. Um, all the parking spaces except for the ADA spaces will be pervious as well as our entry road. Uh, we did that for a number of reasons, one of those being the proximity to the river. That will reduce runoff heading towards the water. Um, and then the path down to the kayak launch is pervious as well. The actual kayak launch is a wooden structure. And the river fluctuates in that area after a heavy rain. It's going to come all the way up to where you see that kayak launch there. At lower water levels, it falls back into the main channel. So you would drop off of that wooden structure and walk on a, a natural surface trail down to the channel's edge. We did include a restroom facility there just for uh, creature comforts. And really the, the only other thing that we're considering for this site is in that area up to the top right, that grassy area to the right of the restroom, is just to save a space if we wanted to expand this site in the future to make more of a neighborhood park. Uh, we did do a survey on the master plan, a public survey, and we got quite a bit of feedback uh, where folks said, don't just build a river access, let's have a playground and, and some other park amenities at this site as well. So probably not part of the first phase, we just want to get the access in there, um, but we will have a space for a playground if we can obtain a grant or something like that for the future. Okay. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Mark, can you, can you show it on the tax map? Mm -hmm. Where is that? So this is, let me, it's basically, here's Swan Drive, there's 17, so here's Dorchester Road, here's 17, there's Swan Drive, and then there's the parcel right there. 
It is a land that was formerly owned by the county. It was an old sewer oxidation pond that was part of that process when the county bought out some private uh, sewer utility operators and closed those sites out. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. I would entertain a motion. Um, second. And the motion is to find it compatible with the comprehensive plan. That was your motion, motion Mr. Yes. We have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? You're not all in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. And then we need a DHL and Winding Woods extension for their development? That's correct. Mr. So, um, let me pull up real quick. So, out, um, some time ago, obviously people probably remember DHL kind of had that. So it's in the Winding Woods Industrial Park. So we worked, you know, we, that was moving and we worked and we got approved plans for them to go and build Building C, which was the first phase of it. So when we get approved plans, there's a vesting period towards those, which is two years in Dorchester <laughs> County. And you all are the authority on granting extensions to those vested rights. So you can grant a one year extension to the existing two years at this point if you feel that this project <coughs> is worthy of a one-year invest uh, additional thing. I mean, nothing's changed. The, the code's the same. Um, it's our, uh, I know the applicant or the representative here is here to answer any questions on the project when they might think they're getting started. Um, so you guys are just authority in, in the granting of that extension of the vested right which will expire in middle of this month. Okay, that was gonna be my question. So this will carry out to June, 2022. Correct. Okay. Mr. Questions? Mr. Carter, I'd make that motion because I think that's a very important piece of infrastructure for the upper county. Um, yeah. I'm hoping, hoping in one year they can get it all, all together. And uh, so I'd make that motion. The, the applicant is to approve the extension. Yes, sir. Okay. We have a second. <coughs> second. And we have a motion to second. <coughs> Mr. Davis, you had something? I was saying uh, a representative is here to speak about the project and sure. some timelines if you all would like to hear it at a county level. Okay. We sure. come forward. How are y'all doing? Uh, Paul Peoples, uh, my address is 501 Wando Park Boulevard, uh, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Um, so yeah, so <clears throat> I'm here. We've been working with Mark for several years on this property. Um, this one was approved um, and I guess probably y'all remember some of this. It's uh, had a lot of uh, uh, good publicity uh, two years ago when we went uh, and got the plans approved. Uh, nothing's changed on the plans. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when they got approved, I guess the industrial development was a little bit slower. Uh, so the developer decided to hold off. And then a year ago, everyone knows COVID hit and I think they, they kept their cold feet. Um, and over the past several months, they have uh, found people, a lot more people interested in this parcel. Um, this, like Mark said, is phase one. Uh, this is uh, a 240,000 square foot uh, distribution facility for St. George. Um, and the, the company that owns this property also owns the, this is 20 acres of 125 acres. Uh, so they've got someone that is interested in developing all 125 acres. Um, obviously this one will be first. Um, their plan is to start construction currently uh, by the end of the year. Uh, which is why we need the vested rights extension. Um, and then we are hoping to start plans on uh, the rest of the development over the past, I guess, really in the next several weeks after a survey is completed on the rest of the site. Um, we'll be scheduling a meeting with Mark uh, to go through the development of that. But um, really, this is the first phase, and uh, they don't want to uh, go back and, and re permit everything. Like Mark said, everything's the same from a zoning standpoint, nothing's changed on our site plan or anything like that. Uh, so we would really appreciate uh, y'all's approval tonight um, so that we can uh, begin to move forward and hopefully bring more development to the St. George area. What's the number of jobs in the first phase it'll create? Um, 
I'm not 100% sure. Uh, two years ago, they said it was around potentially up to 200 jobs. Um, given it's a it's not a uh, build to suit, so they don't know exactly what the uh, employee count will be. Um, but that is what they projected it could be up to um, at the time. Obviously, uh, as they get more development, uh, more uh, distribution facilities or, or manufacturing or whatever goes on the rest of the development, it'll, it'll bring more jobs. This is hopefully the first domino of many out there because um, obviously Dorchester County has put a lot of time and money into the Winding Woods Industrial Park. Uh, so hopefully uh, this will really kind of spark something out there and really get it going. Yeah, thank you. Uh, living up there, I can attest to the fact that those 200 jobs are going to be very important for the Upper, Do upper Dorchester County. So. I just have one question. Um, if you initiate construction in, let's say, the fourth quarter of this year, how long do you think it'll take to complete the construction? Generally, for a building of this size, it'd be 8 to 12 months. Okay. Um, Would you require another extension then or not? Or no. So, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, once we, we need the extension so that we can start construction. Okay. Um, so, it probably won't be completed by this time next year but we are uh, very optimistic that it'll be well on its way. Yeah, I was just wondering, I wanted to make sure that we wouldn't yeah. have to do anything no, no. to keep your, your project active. That's no, all. correct. So as long as we start construction, um, and that was actually one of the things we discussed when uh, this client came up a couple months ago, that, hey, we could start before the middle of June, but then they, they were like, well, we don't want to start something and then pause and then everyone be twiddling their thumbs and kind of wondering what's going on out there. So uh, they decided that it would be best if we get an extension so that we can, once we start, we're going. Yeah, good, thank you. Any more questions? Discussion, we have a motion to second on the, fl on the floor to approve the extension. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Okay, I don't have anything for today, planning director. Just really quick, and it's it's not a report, but um, just something for you all to start thinking about as we see more rezonings in the upper part of the county. Um, uh, we've had some talks with council members about the op option to hold planning commission meetings up in St. George. So how this would work out, we're not sure um, whether it would be having a separate BZA meeting that could be scheduled each month that would handle St. George items or whether the, the meeting could be just rock back and forth. That's the way we do it with the BZA, depending on where the items are, that's where the meeting will be held each month. So just think of something to think about over the next coming months um, so that we've got a plan in place when we start seeing some more of those rezonings come in. As I understand, Dorchester County Council is going to hold a public hearing in St. George, right? They will for the AC that text amendment, yes. So, you know, if you want to schedule us to do one of our meetings up there, how right. it works, that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. I think everybody could agree to that, right? Thank you. Good. Uh, what else? How, how are the text amendments going? The, the AC text amendment has had first reading at council and is scheduled, like you said, for second reading, I believe, that Probably first can. meeting in July. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good. Making progress. Anything else? Public comment. Anybody got any comments from the public? Sure. Sure. Mm. <laughs> Whatever is on that right now. They could have built that subdivision like it was on right now, then they wouldn't have come and asked for a rezoning. So you're rezoning it R2, now they can come build that subdivision like they want. So what's the difference? Typically product, build single family homes versus apartments and um, townhomes. townhomes. There's more of a demand for people who want a yard and a house versus an apartment or a tiny or townhouse. That's typically the driving force. So with that being zoned what it is right now, they could also build a school. That, that's all approved under that zone. Well, that would be the school district's choice where they build schools. Um, but if the school district under that existing zoning wanted to build a school there, they and they ranged that and that made sense, they could. Sir, can I get you to get with staff one on one after the meeting here, please, and answer all your questions? Well, well, 
public comment, not 10 questions. So if I'd like you to get one-on-one -on -one with planning staff and they'll gladly answer all your questions. Anybody else? All right. One more motions in order. Uh, move to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>